cbpinternational.org is our channel. We hope that you guys are reaching out to um, learn more about Christ tonight. And CBP stands for Christ Biblical Principles. We're an international nonprofit organization, and we're just going to do small little um, videos on a regular basis to give you ideas of our theology and our principles and what we believe Jesus really came to do. Obviously came to save the lost and uh, we're all falling into that category. But we also um, find that there's a lot of different things that Jesus did as principles as he spoke to us throughout the New Testament and things that we can apply to our life after we become a Christian to make our life and our walk here on the earth not only glorious to God but also easier for us and giving us the ability to have better and greater things you know the old testament the prophets and the people that were in the old, old testament they were most of the time not in um hardships i mean they went through hardships but their life was filled primarily with a peace and a serenity and an understanding that they were being led by god and since jesus christ has came the Son of God, to give salvation through His blood for everybody that will accept that, we have not only all of the principles of the Old Testament and the covenant, but that covenant has now been broken into a situation where Jesus Christ is the mercy. Jesus Christ's blood will cover any of the problems or any of the sins that we're working through right this moment. Not only the sins and the problems and the struggles that you're having in your own life, but the sins and struggles and the problems that I have in my own life on a day-to-day -day basis. Tonight we're going to talk about <clears throat> peace and uh, what does peace mean? What did Jesus really mean when he was talking about the fruits of the Spirit? And the fruit of the Spirit we're going to basically discuss this evening is John 16, 33 and what it means to us and what it means to our theology as CBP Ministries and what we believe that it means and should be should be taught and um, given as a principle to people, not only to our own lives, but to the people that are friends or relatives and help them to understand what we think <clears throat> that um, John 16.33 is truly saying and what it really means. So before we get into peace and we get into righteousness tonight and we get into joy, which comes through righteousness and peace, we're going to go into prayer. And so all of us have an opportunity to pray here. I'm just going to cover us for a few minutes in Jesus. And we're just going to hope that whatever's going on in your life right now, that you can feel the presence of the Lord in your home, that you can feel that he is walking with you. And that if you haven't had an opportunity to become a Christian and you're just out getting more information, then we're going to give you an opportunity this evening at the end of the video that we're doing today to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior if that would be a decision that you feel that he has placed in your heart but right now we're just going to pray a covering of peace over your family a peace that your heart and mind will be opened up to the ability to understand what we're talking about this evening and just a blessing a blessing for you and a blessing for our channel and because God really wants all of us to be blessed he wants us to walk not only in righteousness and joy and in peace but he wants us to walk in happiness, which is an emotion. I obviously understand that. But that emotion is easier to walk in when you're walking with the Holy Spirit. So, Heavenly Father, we just come before you this evening. We just ask that you guide our footsteps tonight. That you give us strength and wisdom and courage to be able to speak the things that are true. And not speak things that are not true into the lives of the believers and the people that are going to watch this channel. Lord... We know that we all have different circumstances and consequences of our lives that we've made. And we know that you have the ability to take us wherever we're at right now and change that. You can change that instantaneously. You can change it over a period of time by renewing our minds and our lives and allowing us to become closer and walk closer with you in our relationship. And we know that you are the one that changes hearts. There's nothing that I can say this evening or anything that I can do that's going to be an empowerment that's going to stay with any of the individuals that are watching this this evening, unless it's through the Holy Spirit and through your blood and the sacrifice and the faith that they have in you, because you're the way, the truth, and the life. 
and we're going to speak your word tonight into the congregation of people that we get to talk to and we're going to ask that you give us the wisdom to be able to glorify your name we ask these things in your name jesus christ amen Three, the kingdom of god is not a matter of eating and drinking but righteousness peace and joy and so two of the fruits of the spirit are in this verse one of them is basically peace and there's a lot of different people you can google peace you can look at peace in all kinds of different ways and what does peace really mean i mean what what are we really seeking or are we even seeking peace or do we even know how to seek peace and so what we've found and the definition that we believe that uh, lines up the closest to our belief system is peace is an understanding of who you are peace is an understanding of coming to a relationship with jesus christ in a way that explains that you understand that you're a sinner i'm a sinner i understand that i'm in a position where i don't have the ability to make wise decisions all the time and jesus christ because he was righteous and he was holy and he was infinite came down and filled the gap between the sins that man creates and his blood and he makes an atonement for god for us not only one time but on a day-to-day -day basis and then as we walk and grow in our righteousness and as we walk and grow in our ability to understand how to walk with jesus we find that it's easier to do that through the comforter and the bible talks about the comforter a lot the bible is speaking of the comfort of what we call the holy spirit and the holy spirit is the dwelling of the presence of jesus christ not only in your heart but in your mind and in your soul and in your actions so it's really hard for us to say hey we have the holy spirit in us and then we're out there doing things that really go against the belief system of what the bible teaches and we're all going to fall and we're all going to fail and we're not ever going to be perfect while we're on this earth but we should always be striving to walk in the fruits of the spirit and so tonight we're talking primarily about righteousness first now, what i believe is it's very hard for you to truly find out who you are in christ if you're not learning how to walk in righteousness righteousness is a pretty simple definition it's basically doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do even if the rules and laws of the earth are not exactly what we want to do when we honor the system that's been placed on earth and we do it with an open heart we have no expectations of trying to manipulate the system or twist the system or do something sinful to get our will outside of god's will that's when we're starting to learn how to truly walk in righteousness and as we learn to walk more and more in righteousness we learn more and more about ourselves and what that means is I learn more and more about myself. So I can analyze myself on a day-to-day -day basis. And I can say, well, where did I do things that probably were not exactly right? And I can ask for forgiveness for those things. Because I'm a Christian, because of Jesus Christ and my faith, and because of the blood that I believe that he shed on the cross for me. As I do that, I start to build a relationship with Jesus in a way that says, hey, I want to become more like you and less like who I really am or the emotions and all of the things that happen in the chaos of the earth and the world and the things that we do on a day to day basis that we just do it because we have to do it. I want to learn how to step out of that and understand how to walk in joy and peace and serenity with you. And that comes from making right choices. And as we start to make right choices, we start to have peace. And that peace is not a peace that we find in the world. It's a pe an inner peace. It's doing the things that we know we should do, even if the world says that it's not right, or even if the it has nothing to do with our outside circumstances anymore. Now it has to do with our one-on-one -on -one relationship and what we truly believe in the faith that we're walking in in Jesus Christ. As we build our relationship in peace, we start to find that we have an internal joy that comes with that. And that joy is just the Holy Spirit reaffirming in our own lives exactly what the Bible teaches us. If we walk in the righteousness, we learn more about ourselves, 
which is how we become more peaceful with ourselves. This is how we start learning how to walk in the principles of the Bible. We'll start to internally have a joy. The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. So in the world and in the things that we believe in every day, we think or we're going to find our happiness in drinking or we find our happiness in our family. And we can find happiness in all of these things. I'm not trying to say any of those things are bad, but our true internal happiness, our peace and our joy and our serenity and the things that are going to last long after we're off of this earth comes only through the Holy Spirit and our relationship with Jesus Christ. And Romans will justify our actions and our righteousness. And it's basically telling us there <clears throat> the gifts of the Spirit. Two of the gifts that we're talking about this evening, the two that we're primarily discussing, is peace and joy. And we hope that you understand a little bit more about peace because of the time that you spent with us tonight. We're going to give you a definition of what peace means and what we believe. Peace is something that is hard to the physical person to obtain. So if you're really not in a relationship with your spiritual side of your life, if you really do not know Jesus Christ in a spiritual way, it's going to be really hard for you to find peace in the physical world that we live in on a day-to-day -day basis. That's what we believe. We attain peace because the world is a rocky place. It has struggles. Everybody has struggles on the earth. There's nobody that can just walk in serenity here. Some do better than others, but we all have daily struggles that we have to go through. In Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is peace, which means that we start to learn more about ourselves. We walk in our own belief system of what the Bible is teaching. We get good mentors. We get ourselves planted in a good Bible-based church, and we start following the Word of God. And so with that, we're going to close out this evening, and we'll get back with you and we'll go over peace a little bit more. We'll go over other fruits of the spirit on another evening. Every time we have a video and an opportunity to speak, we just want to take a moment through CBP Ministries to reach out to the people that maybe are still trying to decide if Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the only way. And that's what we believe. We believe Jesus Christ is the only way for you to have eternal life after this earth, after this world is over. If you feel that the Lord has led you in some way through the time that we've spent together this evening, we're just going to do the sinner's prayer together real quickly. And that sinner's prayer is not going to save you because of the words that come out of your mouth, but it will save you with the words that come out of your mouth if they line up with the faith in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God that he came for you and he came for me. And if you were the only person on the earth that believed in him, he would have came only for you. It's not a massive thing we're talking about right now. It's, it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And Jesus wants to have that relationship with you. And to have that relationship, it starts with accepting and understanding that we've all fell short, that we're all sinners, and that we need the grace and the blood of Jesus Christ. So we're going to go ahead and do the sinner's prayer together. And if you feel that the Lord has led you in some way to uh, accept him this evening, this will be your opportunity. Heavenly Father, we just come before you now. We just thank you for this day. And Lord, I just want you to know that I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that I failed you so many times. And I know in so many times in my life, I was doing things that we're not lining up with your word or the righteousness or the truth or the peace or the fruit that we're talking about right now. For anyone that's out there this evening that feels that that's where they're at and they've never accepted Jesus Christ in their heart, we just ask the Lord God now that they would just pray this prayer with us, that they would accept you as Lord and Savior, that they would say, show me the way to walk with you, Jesus, and to quit walking in my own ideas and in my own thoughts and start to seek out how to walk on a day-to-day -day basis with you. That I believe that I'm a sinner. I believe that through you, I can come to heaven. I believe you're the Son of God. And I believe that you're the way, the truth, and the life. And that no man will see God without understanding and following you. And we believe if you prayed that prayer this evening, that you have found Jesus Christ. 
and we'd ask for you to get involved in a local church, keep coming to our channel, getting more food from the Bible, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Have a blessed evening.